Já jsem taky z Prahy. Ale jděte. Vy jste tam byla naposledy, víte, jsi s vámi rád to Paul. Paul. Oh, Jack, just a moment. Uh, that's you? Yeah, I want you to meet two charming friends of mine from America. From America? Wonderful. Paul Marvin, meet uh, Mrs. Diana Fowler from New York and her daughter, June. How do you do? Very Hello. pleased to meet you. You shouldn't, you. You coughed all night. Very strict, huh? Oh, well, that's nothing. I have a brother two years older. See how she pushes him around. Fräulein. Oh, what did you want? They have nothing to drink. Say, Paul, I've noticed you drink quite a lot. Mm, just occasionally. When I'm happy, or when I'm unhappy, or when I'm indifferent. <laughs> <laughs> you want to dance? Oh, I don't know. It's so hot in here. I'm afraid I feel a little dizzy from this offspring and wine. Well, we can dance on the terrace. Come on. I'll, I'll lead you. Okay. Poor girl. Oh, now shut up. Why don't you dance? <laughs> if you should see me dance, you wouldn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I want to see how he dances. Now let me see. Oh, he can't dance either. Gestatten Sie, Mama, wann kann ich bitte Rade dran machen? Ja, gewiss. Haben Sie einen Bleistift? Ja. Ich habe nie einen. Eine Schwäche. So. Thank you. Tell me, is this uh, your first trip to Europe? Oh, no. I've been here several times before with my late husband. Paul, look in a flash of it, eh? Are you married, Paul? Divorced. Disappointed? No, not at all. My wife is also a pianist. Mm -hmm. Professional jealousy. Musicians are very ambitious, you know. Ich danke schön. Ich will schon allein anschenken. I think you'd be a big hit in America. What to get out of Europe? There's a lot of misfortune in the past few years. I want to start a new life. I'd even be interested in sponsoring you. You mean you'd invest in me? Well, 
Don't you think it would be uh, an achievement for an insignificant woman to bring back such an artist, a genius? I'd be part of your triumphs, in a way. You're so charming. Our ambassador in Vienna is a very good friend of mine. A strong affidavit would be impressive, you know. What do you say? Now comes a brand new question. How can I ever repay you? By courting me a little. My friends would die of envy. Widows are ambitious too, you know. Say, what's going on here? Mother, one can't leave you alone for a moment. Down of you. Shall we tell them? Well, I suppose I should have consulted my children first. <laughs> very funny, very funny. Come, let's dance. Oh, not really. Come, I want to live dangerously. Oh, no. <laughs> Jack, order champagne. We'll celebrate. Celebrate what? I don't know. Love, life, art, music, America. <laughs> is certainly insistent. <laughs> no, that's nothing. He's just practicing. Wait till you hear him play Chopin. He's considered the greatest exponent of Chopin in Europe, you know. Strange that in America he's so completely unknown. You won't stay there 12 months from now, my dear. There'll be a sensation, I'm sure. But tell me, dear, does he really live here? Why not? The left wing has been closed for two years. Now at least it lives again. Why should the poor soul sit alone in a hotel room and just rush over here to practice? It's ridiculous. Aren't you afraid people will talk? I'd be tickled to death if they would. I've heard some comments on it already. Really? Oh, tell me, please. You really couldn't be pleased by that. You're just showing off. <laughs> That's all right. Listen, Mother, this is too much. Who can listen to this 24 hours a day? Did you say hi to Judith? Oh, excuse me, hello. But, Mother, really? Now, stop that. It's only for a little while. He'll be gone on his tour in a, two or three weeks. Well, why can't he play something pleasant for a change? A rumba or a boogie-woogie, I Oh, why not? Anything would be better than this monotonous... Da -da 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 drives me crazy. <laughs> I can't write. My ears are full of all this music. Oh, it's like house revolution. No, oh, it's not for long, dear. Oh, uh, Mr. Shiner's waiting for you. Excuse me. Well, the beer, dear, fish this for me, will you? I'll be right back. Tom? Thank you. What is it? Miss Fowler, I've got bad news. I need more money. It's all right, Paul. It isn't important. How did you come up with Douglas? Now, here it is. October, Columbus. It's good to start in a smaller place. To warm up, you know. Then Pittsburgh, Richmond, Washington. I'll join him there. Then Baltimore and Philadelphia. After that, Hartford, Providence, Boston. That'll take care of October. If the press is good and business, too, we could prepare town hall in December. And if this clicks, February or March, Carnegie. That sounds wonderful, doesn't it, Paul? Oh, yes. Wonderful. <laughs> Who is Mr. Shiner? Concert agent. Your mother is certainly getting involved. <laughs> Don't misunderstand me. I'm very happy to be here, and I'm very grateful to you, but... I understand. Uh, would you rather live in an hotel, Paul? It can be arranged. Maybe it would be better. Your children will like me. That's obvious. I feel like a... like a displaced person. <gasps> Don't take a nurse. Not a nurse, just jealous. That's what I mean. I'll have a talk with them and straighten things out. Don't worry about it. Dana, you're an angel. It's just what I am, an angel. You know, here in America, an angel is a person who uh, finances a theatrical enterprise strictly for business reasons. So, consider me an angel and relax. Now, how's your financial situation? Well, that's perfectly all right. You're entitled to ask your angel for an advance. Well, surely. That's done all over the world. Now, what difference does it matter? Because in our case, I happen to be a woman. You really are. Oh, shut up and stick to the point. How much do you need? 
First of all, I must pay my insurance premium. It's due at the end of the month. How much is it? Please don't faint. 3,400. Uh, I know it's a lot of money, but it would be a crime to... 3,400 for insurance? My hands. I've got my hands insured for $100,000. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, for you, that is important. Well, my secretary will take care of it. Let's not talk about it anymore. What do you say we have dinner out tonight, hmm? I'll engage a table at the Deauville for 8 o'clock, all right? Well, she says it's strictly business now, and as soon as he gets going... How would you like to have him for your father? Oh, Walter, don't be silly. I talked to her about that. She just laughed and said it was nonsense. Well, let's hope so. But don't you see, Junie, he's a stranger. You, you can't talk to him about anything. You know, he hasn't got the slightest idea about movies or baseball. And he's so absent-minded. Well, the first of next week, he'll leave for his concert tour. something to eat around here? Well, it's kind of late, Mr. Marvin. The restaurant's closed. Maybe they could fix you something over there at the bar. until after the number is over. That's ridiculous. Uh, leave her alone. She's nuts. She'll cool off. Yes, that's all you have to say. All you know is to run upstairs to those crooks and lose all of your money. And mine, too. You, you... Shut up! You shut up! Dancing to you means just having some kind of a profession. All you care about is drinking and gambling and... You'll be surprised. suitcase, please. What happened? Are you crying? Have you seen my partner? I think he went upstairs with Mr. Kennedy and the fat guy. Look at him, that clumsy hick. Who do you mean? That guy sitting there eating like a savage. You mean Paul Marvin? Do you know him? Well, sure. He's a famous pianist. His picture's in the lobby. He gives a concert here, I think, tomorrow, but I'm not sure. $3,400. 
dollar eighty. It's a lot of dough to invest in that stinker. Excuse me, Mr. Marvin. Would you give me your autograph? Of course. <laughs> See, young lady, this is my first autograph in America. I don't have a pencil. <laughs> Wait, I think I have one. You have. Here. Thank you. So this is your first autograph. There's even more to it. I'm also the first one you've tamed. Make a bum? It's true. I came here to fight you, to make you feel miserable. And here I am waiting for you, like a schoolgirl. I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you remember me? No. You see? And I performed for you last night. That must be a mistake. Oh, no mistake, Mr. Marvin. 
You're the guest who made all the fuss last night. Lit matches and talked loud and kicked chairs around during my number. Don't you remember that little bar in your hotel? Yes, I think I know what you mean. Oh, it's a shame. How can you ever forgive me? I did already while listening to you. How you played, it was out of this world. You know, I don't understand much about your serious music, but it does something to me. Are you sure you have forgiven me? Sure, I'm sure. Are you alone here? Yes. No one waiting for you? No. Let's have a drink together. I know a wonderful little bar not far from here. Everything's been over between Carlo and me for a long time. So tomorrow morning, I'll call my agent and go out as a soloist again. That's more fun anyway. See, I changed my mind. I think I will have another drink. Oh, fine. Hey, miss. Two more, yes? Mm, I love dancing. I must admit, Carlo's a terrific dancer. You know, we danced his arrangement of some of that stuff you played tonight. You mean Chopin? Yeah, I, I think it was. That's why your playing touched me so. I almost cried. <laughs> to your success. To our success. Oh, I like your hands. You're joking. I have the hands of a butcher, not of a pianist. No, you have the hands of a, of a doctor. Hmm. Then, of course, you have eyes of an angel. Angel. I forgot to make a phone call. Well, can't you call now? It's too late now. Well, I, I'll make up something tomorrow morning before I leave. When are you leaving? 10.15, Pittsburgh. Do you think I'll ever see you again? Who knows? Maybe you will. I think I'll go to New York and try to get into a musical. It would be fun if we bumped into each other. Trafalgar 3325. Shall I write it down? Trafalgar 3325. I'll remember it. What do you think? I wish I was 10 years younger. Inferiority complex? No, just gray hair and wrinkles. Ah, oh, you men are all so conceited. What would you do? What? If you were ten years younger. Nothing, forget it. Coward. his importance writes that are comparatively unknown his emotional skill is above his technique and that's what makes his performance so attractive i think that's wonderful what more do you want we can use a lot of quotations for publicity and i think we shouldn't rush carnegie hall i need at least four or five rehearsals with the orchestra that answers that i'll try to line up a few towns in the meantime i'll be running along see you folks tomorrow see you. Bye. diana I give your secretary a check for six hundred dollars. I give you more when I get the advance from Douglas. Oh, that's wonderful. How do you like your new apartment? <laughs> what would I do without you? <laughs> I hope to go. Well, it'll be a very sad day for me when you grow up and won't need me anymore. <laughs> oh, I always forget to tell you, Paul. You must sit up straight at the piano. That's better. You play like a king and sit there like a tired old salesman. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> Dorothy. Well, that reminds me, uh, somebody rang you day before yesterday, I think, a woman. I gave her your number. A woman? Mm-hmm. Hello? Who? Margot? No. I can't believe it. I called you so many times, and finally I got your new phone number. Tell me, how long are you here in New York? 
I was on New York's show that flopped after three rehearsals. Paul, I must talk to you as soon as possible. Of course. Where shall we meet? Can't I come to your place? 1310 East 57th Street, Apartment G. Thank you, Paul. I'll be right there. Margot, come in. Oh, I'm all out of breath. Did you know your elevator stuff? Yes, I know. I'm terribly sorry. Come, sit down and relax. Take off your coat. Tell me, what can I offer you? Nothing for the moment. You know, I thought of you very often. You did? Oh, by the way, I was at your concert at Town Hall. It was great. You were there? Really? Why didn't you come backstage? Well, there were so many people around. Besides a very attractive woman. I didn't want to butt in. Mm, it's a very dear friend of mine. Just a friend. Now tell me all about yourself. Oh, I'm so mixed up, Paul. I didn't have the guts to walk out on Carlo, as I told you, and well, now it's worse than ever. I can't tell you all the details, but he's, he's dragging me down. So I packed my things and wrote him a letter that I was leaving town and he shouldn't look for me. Oh, I know he'll be furious. That's why I must disappear so he can't find me. Please, Paul, can I stay here with you just for a few days? What do you mean, here with me? Well, well, haven't you another room just for a short time? Well, yes, but you're a young girl, my... Oh, you're above all suspicion. What I mean is, well, look, you're a respectable man. He wouldn't dare make a scandal with you involved. That's different. If he should find you here, you can always introduce me as, as your grandfather. Well, I, I think it's ridiculous. It's just absurd. I'm sorry. I thought that you were different. That you'd understand. Oh, darling, I'm afraid you are overestimating me. I have my problems, too. People are coming here to see me. Where shall I hide you? How shall I explain? Maybe I can find you a little apartment somewhere near. Maybe I can even help you out financially, as far as my situation permits. Well, I hope to make some money in the future, but for the moment, uh... Well, what I need for the moment is your... your good influence. Your... your protection. Oh, Margot, you are losing yourself in big words. If you haven't got your own moral strength, what do you expect from me? Maybe you're right. It's a foolish idea. Please forgive me, Paul. Now you make me feel like a heel, but what can I do? I'm terribly sorry. What's this? Oh, those belong to me. I was so sure about you. Fine, I'll call you tomorrow. Good night, Diana. Dinner's ready. Who's Diana? That's that woman you saw at my concert. She's, how shall I say, my sponsor. Your sponsor? Are you on television? Ah. <laughs> uh, yes, it here, Paul. Fine. That woman. She's very attractive and dresses well, too. She must be rich, huh? Oh, she's a real lady. Tell me something, Paul. That white streak in her hair, is that normal or, or artificial? I don't know. Call her up, ask her. Wonderful. I hope you like my cookie. Mmm. Delicious. Oh, I'm so happy you didn't let me down, Paul. I feel so safe here. It's like a hideout. All of a sudden, I feel like a married man. Is that bad for a change? No, just unusual. Oh, the coffee. Oh, I hope I get a job in a show or a nightclub soon. Oh, I have a brand new routine. Wait, I'll show you. It's very sexy. Ah. Ah, God. What's so brand new about it? Oh, you should see me do it in tights. It really has style. Oh, you'll have to come see me. It'd be good for my prestige. You know, a lot of people know your name already. You'd be surprised. But before I forget, never answer the phone. Understand? Oh. Oh, yeah, I think I understand. That uh, friend of yours, that sponsor. <laughs> you.
Oh, it's you. Hi, Paul. Sorry to wake you up, but I've got to have an answer before 11 o'clock. Douglas agrees that you can make a few more towns now that Carnegie is postponed till spring. Oh, that's all right with me. I can use some additional money. <laughs> that's what I thought. Why are you sleeping here? Uh, it's too hot there. Oh, by the way, have you got a cup of coffee? Just warm it up. I don't care. <laughs> you see, I, I'm drinking my coffee usually downstairs in the... Oh, drugstore. it's all right. I just thought... What's that? What? Don't you hear it? Your shower started running. Oh, must be next door. Oh, say, Mrs. Fowler told me last night you don't feel well. Tired, I suppose. Yes, maybe lack of sleep. I'll sleep a little more after you're gone. All right, don't rush me. I understand your English. I'll call Douglas right away if you don't mind. Wait a second, I want you to hear the... Hello? Mr. Douglas, please. Oh, he isn't? I'll call later. Maybe it's better that I talk to him personally. I'll rush over before noon and call you from there. How did you sleep, landlord? <laughs> you old goat. Aren't you ashamed? I'll call you around noon, Paul. Take it easy. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul. Is it very bad? Well, it was my agent. I'm sure he won't miss a chance to run around and tell everybody. Do you really think so? What did you tell him? What will I tell him? That you came to tune the piano. <laughs> I'm so happy you're taking with you, Paul. <laughs> what else can I do? <laughs> I must make a phone call, excuse me. I'll make breakfast. you answer? Hello? Mr. Marvin is here. Excuse me, please, for dropping in. I just wanted to see you for a while. I hope you don't mind. Oh, I've just been calling you this moment. Someone was there, but they didn't answer. Well, that's impossible. Well, I must have been dialing the wrong number. Well, very busy. I can't understand it. <laughs> I'm... Don't get excited, Paul. <laughs> You're entitled to your little secrets. I'm not spying on you. But you shouldn't think that I have some... Oh, don't worry about it. I'm not even interested. Now, how do you feel about your additional trip? Fine. Wonderful. I'm in good shape. You have a sort of mysterious gleam in your eye. You see, you're provoking me. When I want to explain you, you don't give me a chance. Don't you understand? It's the saddest thing in the world for a woman to become a confessor. <laughs> I'd like to see you embarrassed. But I'm not, I assure you. All right, I'll tell you the truth. I met a little girl, a dancer. I think it was in Columbus, Ohio. As a matter of fact, she was the first one to ask for my autograph, you know. Oh, I see. And you didn't have a pencil, so you had to take her all the way to New York, and now she's living in your apartment, poor Paul. Oh, Paul, don't be so tragic about it. Where's your sense of humor? <laughs> Come on, let's have a drink, and you can tell me all about it. What's that? I was at the library. Some additional music. For you, something. Here. French perfume. I left the price on to impress you. Oh, thank you, Paul. Why are you so dressed out? I have great news for you. Yes? You'll get rid of me. I talked to Vet this morning. Who is Yvette? Oh, she's a girlfriend I know. We were in a show together. What about her? Well, she told me that Carlo wasn't furious at all. 
On the contrary, she said he was very calm, and about two days later he left town with some roadshow or something. Mm-hmm. That's good. You know, it was easier than I expected. Just the fear of making a radical change. Carlo means nothing to me anymore. You know, I think after you reach a certain point, you... What are your plans now? Well, Yvette said I can share her apartment on 14th Street. Isn't it wonderful how things work out sometimes? I'm already packed. We'll have dinner and I'll call a cab and your troubles will be over. I'll miss your beautiful music. I really will, Paul. And I'll never forget your kindness. You know, it's a, a great feeling to know that one has a friend like you somewhere near. You must come have dinner with us before you leave. My girlfriend's a wonderful cook. Paul, what is it? Did I say something wrong? Why do you torture me? I don't understand. You're a woman with a normal instinct. You know well what I mean. Paul, I can't believe it. Now, please, turn around and look at me. Yes, my dear. It's sad, but it's true. Well, what's so sad about it? I think it's wonderful. What's so wonderful about it? Well, that a great man like you could care for such a little schnook like me. Is that all you have to say? Well, I'm saying what I feel. Why don't you do the same? All right, I can read it in your eyes. Let me answer you. You're not too old. And get that nonsense out of your head. You're a great artist, and that makes you attractive and desirable. I really mean it, Paul. I'm crazy about you. Now, listen. I'm going on tour for about two weeks. I'll return with a lot of money, I hope. You'll wait here for me, and then... Then what? Then we'll talk business. Ah, oh, no. I'm not the waiting type. There'll be another girl to come for your autograph, and... Why don't you take me with you? I'd like to watch the people while you play. And I want to have my aisle seat in the front row at every concert. People look at me and say, look, that's his girlfriend. Maybe they'll say, look, that's his daughter. I shall. Sorry to interrupt you, but I just had a moment, so I thought I would... Won't you join us? Oh, it Sit looks down. delicious. Just a little piece. Any news from Paul? Don't even ask me. I hate to spoil your lunch. What's wrong? Paul is an idiot. Here, read this. You read it, Joe. It's there, marked with a red pencil. Paul Marvin is an accomplished artist, and the public paid tribute to his artistry with a spontaneous ovation, which increased when the news leaked out that our celebrated guest had a quiet and discreet wedding ceremony in the house of the Albany's Justice of the Peace that same afternoon. Looks like Caesar and Cleopatra. That old fool. Dorothy. Some fresh coffee, please. Water. Oh. It's 
flooded for miles and miles. Maybe that's the end of the tour. Here, read it. It's in every contract. In case of earthquake, fire, flood, or any yes, other... Yes, I know, I read it, but... What shall I do? It puts me in a terrible situation. I spent all my money. You can't expect me to carry the whole load on my shoulders. I can't insist on you returning money which you don't have, but you can expect me to pay you the rest. Well, can't you pay me at least something? I'm completely broke. What'd you do with all that money I advanced you? Well, you know how it is. I bought my wife some beautiful things, and <laughs> it's just... Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Fowler. What do you say about that mess? Well, it isn't very pleasant, but it's not tragic. Hello, Paul. Hello. Congratulations on your marriage. Thank you. It seems I've chosen the wrong moment. I should say so. Well, who expects a flood when they're in love? Just one of those things. We'll be right with you. So your little autograph hunter wasn't so innocent after all, huh? Well, at the time I told you I didn't intend to marry her. Did you have to marry her? Oh, no. A voluntary affair. I understand she's quite young. Yes. Could be my daughter. You must meet her sometime. She's very charming. I'm sure she is. Are you happy? Yes, I think I am. Dana, I'm terribly sorry, but... You know, my marriage to double expenses and then this interrupted trip... I'm afraid I can't pay you anything this time. Then be diplomatic and don't discuss it. How do you intend to manage? My wife is taking a temporary job. Darkness is so depressing. Oh. My feet are killing me. I couldn't sit down for a minute. I was in negligees all day. The boss was very disappointed when he found out that I was married. He asked me to have dinner with him. That French wolf. Who brought you home? The boss himself. Wasn't that nice of him? Does he bring all his employees home? <laughs> oh, don't be ridiculous. You should see him. He looks like the jolly joker. What's that dress you have on? Oh, it's a model. He gave it to me. Isn't it beautiful? I'll go fix dinner. How about yesterday's too? Margo, just a moment. It's for you. For me? Mm -hmm. Hello. Oh, it's you. <laughs> ah, don't give me that. <laughs> uh huh. But there are a lot of unmarried blondes running around. No. Oh, I'm afraid I'll have to hang up now. Bye. Who was it? Mrs. Carpenter's son. Rich people. Park Avenue, you know. There's customers. He's just a kid about 27. Stupid boy. You're not going to work there anymore. What? What did you say, Paul? You heard me. Thank you. 
I hate to be a pest, but that guy Marvin breaks my heart. He keeps calling me day and night, asking desperately to get him a job. How about Mrs. Fowler? I thought they were friends. She sure can help him out. He says he couldn't ask her for more money, and she seems unconcerned. So what can I do? Oh, well, wouldn't his wife take a job? She had one and lost it. They moved to a cheaper apartment downtown. Terrible place. I just came from there. He keeps borrowing and selling. That's a mess. Well, I feel sorry for the guy. Wait a minute. Here's something. What is it? Yeah, it's the 27th. A matinee down on 2nd Avenue at the Polish National Hall. Some anniversary celebration with songs and dances. Paul could play a few uh, Chopin waltzes. I'm sure they'd go for it. Yeah, Chopin was Polish. That's good. How much? Oh, 100 bucks. Maybe 150. That's really bad. Look. Can I still wear it? It's tall. Ah, oh, nobody will see it. Why don't you wear your tuxedo? After all, it's a mixed program. Yeah, I haven't got it. I sold it. Well, how about your blue suit? Well, I had to pay my piano rent for two months. Aren't you going with me? Look, Paul, I'd prefer to stay at home. I don't feel too good, and well, to tell you the truth, I hate to see you on such a mixed program. I'd like to see you at Carnegie Hall, in your old glory, where you belong. Uh, to me, an audience is an audience. Goodbye. You jealous, stubborn, bohemian thickhead. Look, why don't you let me... No! Well, that's for me. I'm expecting a call. Yvette? Hi! Can you come over? Oh, I see. Oh, you don't say. Oh! Oh, that is exciting. Oh, wait, I'll call you right back. What's the number? Columbus 3545? Wellington Playhouse? Sure, I know where that is. 55th Street. I'll call you right back. Bye. Imagine, they brought Carlo back to do the choreography for a new musical. And Yvette said he wanted me to do the show. Isn't that nice of him? Carlo, of all the people. Don't tell me you would really consider it. Well, it would keep us going. Imagine, $200 a week. And I'd love to be in a show again. Oh, don't be a child, Paul. Carlo means nothing to me. He knows I'm married. Wouldn't it be wise to let me do it? Listen, I have a performance. Don't upset me. And don't ever mention it again. Ever. Understand? Old idiot. I got after the intermission. Where's the phone? Please, drive as fast as you can. I've got to be back in 15 minutes. Well, it depends on the traffic, mister. I'll do the best I can. You know where the Wellington Playhouse is? Yeah, sure. 55th Street. Stay at home. Paul, I didn't know. I didn't intend to come here. You can ask Yvette, please, come here. Yvette, this is my husband. How did he do? Yvette, tell Paul how it happened that I was here. I just wanted to come over to... But how come you're here? Don't tell me that... Don't worry about me. I'll be back in time. Just want you to know that your lies and tricks... It's the excitement. What happened? You're Carlo? Yes. Why don't you leave her alone? Paul, he had nothing to do with it. He can talk for himself. 
I do send her messages. Don't you know that she's married? Pourquoi est-ce que tu lui dis pas la vérité? Ce serait beaucoup plus simple. Fais attention, je comprends le français. If you want to know, we danced together for three years. I'm still concerned about her. I happen to know she needs the work very badly. Oh, touch him. I saw your concern. Paul! Where's he going? His wife told me the whole story that he became ill and... Ah, baloney, he's been drinking. These Polish people told me he was there, backstage. And suddenly he left and didn't come back. Never heard of anything like this before in my life. And I'll see that nobody will book him. Take my word for it. Nobody. It's true. job downtown in a bar. Nonsense. It's a different kind of music. That's not for you. Oh, I'll try. What's the difference? I'll play some old waltzes. Oh, just another disappointment. Wouldn't it be easier to let me take that modeling job? No! Agent. Why doesn't he help you out? The poor devil, he can't even help himself. How about your friends? What friends? That's a sergeant woman, for instance. Call her up. Ask her to help you out. For her, it'll be a cinch. I can't. Why not? I owe her enough money. I... No, it's impossible. Is she jealous or angry because you married me? I don't think so, but I didn't pay her for about three months. How much do you owe her? Almost 3,000. That much? For what? What? I do pay my insurance premium. So much for insurance? I never heard of that. What kind of insurance? I have my... me. What? What did you say? I asked you what kind of insurance? Life? No, it's a special insurance. <laughs> to hear your voice again. I'm slightly drunk, I must admit. I had to. I, I needed courage to call you. I'm lost. I'm, I, I'm desperate. I need your help. I need money. Believe me, it's not easy for me to call you after I neglected my obligations to you. Paul, it wasn't only your obligation to me. It was a little more than that, but let's not discuss it. I don't like to be here just for emergencies. It's humiliating. And I don't intend to finance or sponsor your irresponsible adventures. I know you understand, Paul.
Paul? Are you there? Sure, you must hate me. Why should I hate you? I just feel sorry for both of us. I brought you bad luck. Money, 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 everything is money. <laughs> isn't that silly? No, it isn't. Say, why don't you call up that woman? I did. And? I can guess. She'd help you if I weren't around. Oh, well, what's the use talking about it? So I was right. She wanted you to leave me. She didn't say anything of the kind. If she did, what's the difference? I couldn't. You mean you couldn't live without me? <laughs> Maybe it's just your imagination. There's nothing so special about me. For a man of your standard, I'm not even too intelligent. My face, maybe it's cute, so what? Some people even think I look a little cheap with my bleached hair. My legs are okay, but nothing to rave about. You're sure trying hard to talk me out of yourself. Just for the good of both of us. It's no use, my dear. It's some sort of strange fascination. It's like a curse, like a, a heavy veil. I tried everything to get out of it. In my despair, I even took you apart like a little toy. Physically, I stripped you to the bone. Mentally, to a cheap little tramp. Everything went fine, just fine. But the first moment you came near to me, I was lost again. So what's the use? It doesn't work. Why are you laughing? Does it sound like laughing? Uh, and you are? I'm Paul Marlon, Mr. Frame. Oh, of course, how can I help you? Uh, I was recommended to you. You see, I wrote a piano piece some years ago. It was very successful in Prague, in Vienna, in Salzburg, in Rome. It has never been published before, and I thought that maybe... You mean serious music? Yes. No, I'm sorry. Don't you have some, some hit tunes, you know, for dance orchestras, things like that? Well, I mean, if you like it, I could rearrange it. But... Mr. Frame? Yes, boss wants to see it. I'll be right back, Mr. Marvin. Oh, incidentally, that's a good idea about that rearranging. We'll see. Could I make a phone call, please? Thank you. Marco? Just want to tell you that... Everything looks very good. Look, Paul, it's hard for me to tell you this, but... Well, I think it was all a mistake. You and I. But, Margo, I... Let's be sensible. I've made up my mind. I want to go back to show business anyway. So it'll be better for the both of us if we... You'll see that everything will change. <laughs> no, Paul, it can't change. I don't want to go on like this. I packed my things and I want to be out before you get back. I must get out. I feel like I'm suffocating here in this dirty, filthy place. But, Margot, for heaven's sake, don't let me down. I, I'm telling you, I, I get some money, I'm sure. Excuse me, I'll be right through. Margot, I can't talk now. Please promise me that you'll wait for me. I must talk to you first. Now, promise you'll wait. All right, calm down. I promise I'll wait. Excuse me, I had to call my wife. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Well, I haven't much time. If you wish to play your composition, go ahead. Yes. Excuse me, I'm, I'm in clubs. 
sit there. I... Why don't you come back another time, Mr. Marvin? Excuse me, I've got a lot of things to do. That's terrible. How did it happen? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Well, did somebody call an ambulance? Don't worry. He doesn't feel any pain. He's had a lot of morphine. Is, is it very bad? Hello, Mrs. Marvin. I'm June Fowler. Mother asked me to call you. She's very sorry about the accident. And she told me to ask you if... Thank you. It's very nice of you, but I don't need anything. Thanks. Bye. That woman, Mrs. Fowler, she brought Paul over from Europe. Now she asks what she can do to help. What does the doctor say? It's not as bad as they expected. They stopped the machine just in time. He'll get out of the hospital in a few days. But he'll never be able to play again. That's terrible. What will happen then? I don't know. The insurance company called about some papers. I told them I didn't know anything about it. Well, don't worry. Carlo said he'll take care of you. He's well off now, you know. I can't take money from Carlo. From a friend? From a fellow artist? Why not? He's still crazy about you. How do you know? Oh, well. I know that he let you dance three solo numbers and give you featured billing. Did he tell you that? Sure. I would not make it up. What's the use? Can you explain how the accident happened, Mr. Martin? Did you uh, slip or...? No, I, I fainted. You see, I had some trouble. Financial trouble? Partly. I had a quarrel with my wife. Jealousy, you know. Your wife is very young and beautiful. It's understandable. Go ahead, please. So I came to the publisher's office to play my composition.
Pardon the intrusion, Mrs. Marvin. I'm Diana Fowler. I know. My husband isn't home yet. I came to see you, Mrs. Marvin. I'm quite tired of apologizing for this terrible mess, but I don't feel responsible, believe it or not. Oh, don't worry, please. Just sit down any place. You'll get dirty anyway. I must admit, I'm not fit to make a very good impression, but I'm so tired. I won't stay long. If you came to offer me financial help, thanks. I don't need any. My friends take care of that. I hope you don't mind if I close my eyes. They hurt so badly. No. No, not at all. I understand Paul is doing quite well. He's to be discharged in a few days. I just talked to him a little while ago. He just got his last checkup. I was told as far as his playing again is concerned, it doesn't look too good. That's the least you could say about it. It's really tragic. But fortunately, there's the insurance. Good for him. I hope it'll give him some kind of security. Well, you won't have to worry for quite some time, at least. Well, I don't worry about myself. As a matter of fact... Yes? Nothing. May I guess? It's such a delicate matter, I'm rather afraid of using the wrong words. I'll try to take the words for what they mean and not how they sound. Well, Mrs. Marvin, I believe it was ambition rather than love that attracted you to Paul. It meant a great deal to you to be the wife of a man of his genius, his social standing. You tried very hard to climb up to him, but only succeeded in dragging him down. Forgive me for saying it. All right, I made a mistake, but I didn't mean anything bad. I didn't want to hurt him. It, it just happened, so... But Paul is madly in love with you. He's quite convinced he can't live without you. That's just the trouble. Any sacrifice I make, anything I do will lead to nothing. I feel trapped. I want to get out. What shall I do? And without his music, he'll suffer even more. He'll need peace, rest... And lots of patience. Mrs. Fowler, may I ask you a question? Please do. Are you in love with him? No. We're a good actress if Paul's was a little too long. Then consider me a bad actress. Why do you ask? I need your help. Well, how can I help you? You can't expect me to talk you into leaving Paul just to ease your conscience. But if I do leave him, not just for my sake, but for the sake of both of us, would you take care of him? Do you think I'd make a good nurse? I'm sure you can give him all those things you talked about. Rest, peace of mind, and patience. What do you say? It's open. Excuse me. I didn't know you had company. That's all right. I'm leaving right away. If there's anything I can do for you, Mrs. Marvin, anything at all, please let me know. Goodbye. to see you Friday and then every third day. Come shave next time. Hmm. Tell me, Doctor, what's the final verdict? Give it time and let's hope. That's all I can say for the present. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, are you still here? The insurance company called. I told him you had gone home. Miss Peterson, thank you for everything. Good Bye. luck, sir. Thank you. 
Fargo? Fargo? Marvin? International Insurance Company of Geneva. Jack Lowe speaking. Say, could you come over? A very important matter came up. I'm sorry I can't. I'm... What is it? We have a man here, an employee of the publishing company, who claims that he saw you just a few seconds before your accident. We have his statement here. And we'd like to confront you with him before we proceed farther. Can you read it to me over the phone? But don't you think, Mr. Marvin, that all this business about your staring at your hand before the accident could involve you in a very... Uh, I mean, if you insist on going ahead with your application, we must take it to court. You know what that could mean. Thank you for giving me the chance. Destroy the application. Yeah, bum. <laughs> 